have you ever wondered why movie theaters spend more money on their sound systems than they do on the projectors that show the movies? Well, it's for a good reason. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys why this sound bar from Yamaha, the Truex Bar 50A, might be the missing piece of the puzzle that you've been looking for. And I'll also share with you my thoughts on whether the 799 price point is a good one. And stick around because there is something very special about this one. And we'll come back to that, but before we do, first of all, there's some key features and specs that you need to know about to help you decide whether this soundbar is the right one for you. So if you don't already own a surround sound system or Dolby Atmos system, my guess is that your fear is of the setup process and all of the cables involved, and you're worried that maybe you might end up like Neo at the end of the matrix. Well, it's 2024, and if that's what you think, well, you're wrong because this particular sound solution from Yamaha has been designed to be easier to set up than a toaster. Because this soundbar and subwoofer combo is quite simply plug and play. The ports on the back consist of a power in, the HDMI ARC port, which is what you'll need to use to get the Dolby Atmos signal to the soundbar. There's also a second HDMI pass-through port, which is ideal for plugging in streaming devices or laptops. However, it's not a high-speed HDMI port, so I do recommend if you have any next-gen consoles, you still wanna keep those connected directly to the TV. There's an optical input, so if you have an older TV that doesn't have HDMI ARC, you can use that. And there's also an ethernet port for wired internet, which is optional because it does have Wi-Fi. And the HDMI connection between your TV and the soundbar does support HDMI CEC. Put simply, this means your TV remote can control the volume on the soundbar, and when you shut your TV down, the soundbar will shut down, and it will also auto-wake when you turn on your TV. The soundbar itself has that classic style. It's got a nice texture on the main cabinet, and it's not a fingerprint magnet, which is nice to see. There's a fabric mesh, and behind that mesh are two forward-facing racetrack-style drivers, so they're kind of oblong as opposed to the round drivers that you typically see. And then there's two upward-angled two inch cones for the Dolby Atmos channels that fire up over your head. And there's two three inch subwoofers all built into this soundbar. And the total output on the soundbar alone is 280 watts. That's equal to an uppercut from UFC champ turned boxer, Francis Ngannou. The subwoofer that comes with it is quite slim, perfect for slotting down the side of a sofa. It's also got a fabric mesh on one side because it has a side firing 16 centimeter woofer and just a simple power lead is all that's needed for this as it will auto pair with the soundbar when you turn it on. The onboard controls for the soundbar are located across the top with a nice durable rubber protective layer. The power button has this really nice rose gold accent and that seems to be the theme with the branding on this soundbar. And it looks classy in my opinion. Across the front are some LED light indicators that help identify the different modes and also when you're changing the volume. And these can be dimmed if you find them distracting whilst watching movies in a dark room, for example. Now here's an interesting story for you. Did you know that Yamaha have been making audio equipment since the 18th century when they started manufacturing reed organs. Since then, they've become well known for their excellent motorbikes, but music is at the heart of Yamaha. And this is what I want to show you. Check out the logo. It's evolved over the years, but did you know that the logo is based on a tuning fork? A nod to Yamaha's 140 years of audio heritage. So that's a pretty interesting story and apologies for getting sidetracked. I'm very hungry and I've got a sudden urge to make some toast, but don't go anywhere. I still got to show you that killer feature. So when it comes to controlling the soundbar, Yamaha does throw in a nice remote control, which gives you all of the controls you'll probably ever need, including four different sound modes. You've got regular stereo, standard mode, movie mode and game mode. And there's also the option to enhance the vocal clarity with clear voice and enhance the bass with bass extension. And all of the controls on the remote are also available here within Yamaha's soundbar controller app. Now, when it came to setting this up, I did get a little bit stuck, but I found a really simple solution. We'll come back to that in a moment. So the Yamaha soundbar controller app brings Alexa into place, so you can basically turn this soundbar into a smart speaker. It also allows you to play music to the soundbar over your local area network, aka your Wi-Fi. So this is definitely the preferred method to streaming audio to the soundbar because you'll get better quality that way, and it also does support AirPlay too. So all of the control features from the remote are here on the app with the ability to adjust between the different audio modes, 
the sound levels on the bar and the sub, and there's controls for the very interesting surround sound speakers if you do decide to buy those, and more on those in a moment. Now you might be thinking, you said it was easy, just like a toaster, just plug it in and it works. Well, the matter of fact is, it is. You can literally just plug it in and it will work and it will sound great. And if you wanna stream audio to it, you can do that over Bluetooth 5.0, no internet required. However, it is important to remember that manufacturers like to improve their products after it's released with software updates. So if you do want to do a software update, you will need to connect it to the internet. And here is where I ran into a problem. So I just upgraded my internet to Wi-Fi 6C. And for some reason, the Yamaha soundbar doesn't like Wi-Fi 6. So there was two solutions to this problem. The hard way, which would have meant logging into the router, changing the signal to 2.4 gigahertz from the 6G that I'm using right now, and then reconnecting the bar that way. And then there's the easy way, which involved literally just taking the soundbar to my modem and plugging in an ethernet cable between the modem and the soundbar and doing that initial update, which then instantly allowed it to connect to the Wi-Fi. So now this soundbar will get all of the updates via Wi-Fi and I'll never have to hardwire it into the modem again. So that was it, problem solved. If you do get the soundbar, you run into that issue, that's how you sort it. Okay, so now the fun part, let's do a little split test between my built-in TV speakers or my very thin TV versus the Yamaha TrueX Bar 58. And I'm gonna record this in the highest quality possible with an omnidirectional mic. Nothing's clear. We've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. Oh. My family's been fighting them for centuries. Nothing's clear. We've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. Oh. My family's been fighting them for centuries. Your blood comes from Dukes. Okay, so now let's do a little demo with the rear speakers connected to the soundbar. Nothing's clear. You've been fighting the Harkonnens for decades. Oh. My family's been fighting them for centuries. Your blood comes from Dukes. Them great houses. Here, we're equal. Okay, so I think you'll agree, trying to watch a movie with built-in TV speakers on a thin TV is kind of equal to trying to listen to a beautiful symphony with a pair of tin cans with a piece of string connecting them. Yes, you'll be able to understand and follow what's going on, but you're gonna be missing the true beauty of what you're watching. You're not gonna hear the nuances and the details and the way in which the artist intended you to hear it. Okay, so my first impressions of the Yamaha True X Bar 50A compared to my much more expensive system that I normally use is it's pretty damn close. And compared to the built-in TV speakers on my TV, it is metaphorically and actually next level thanks to those upward firing drivers and the added bass behind me. And it's hard to explain the immersion that you get when you add something like this to your TV. It's like sitting in the middle of a bubble of sound all around you that even goes over your head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. And I played quite a few hours of Call of Duty with this soundbar and it performs really well for gaming and the game audio preset mode boosts the higher frequencies so that you can hear footsteps behind you and it gives you a much better sense of direction when gaming so you can hear when people are creeping around, you can hear their footsteps and this will give you a gaming advantage. But for watching movies and TV content, I do prefer the movie mode. It just seems to be a good all rounder. I did turn down the bass just a little bit because it's so powerful. I don't want to piss off the neighbors, but it's good to know what it's capable of for when I want to throw a house party or something like that and really boom, shake, shake the room. Now here's the killer feature that I've been hinting at all the way through this video. It is these little speakers. These are called the Truex 1A. They retail for 150 pounds each. These are fully battery operated speakers, completely wireless. So this means they can be positioned anywhere in your living room without having to worry about all of the cables. 
They do charge via USB-C and you could hardwire these in permanently with USB-C cables. They pair to the soundbar very quickly just by pushing and holding the action button on the top to put them into surround mode. Then when you push and hold it a little bit longer, you can switch to the left and right channel and there's a little indicator on the back that lets you know which channel is on. And then all you do is just hold down the setup button here for a few seconds and they automatically pair. And that is literally the setup process for a proper surround sound system with Dolby Atmos support. It's honestly incredibly easy, but what makes these compact 10 centimeter speakers very unique is they're not just rear channel speakers, they're also portable Bluetooth speakers. And do you realize what this means? This means these speakers can pretty much go anywhere with you in any room of the house or even out of the house and when it's time to sit down and binge watch something on Netflix or a movie, you can bring them back into the living room, put them in the corners of the room, put them back into surround mode, and there you go, you've got your Dolby Atmos surround system set up and ready to go with minimum effort. And this truly is a game changer, and I do wish more surround sound systems had this feature. So here's the reality. If you've been holding out on getting a surround sound system because you're worried about all the wires and you're just currently using your built-in TV sound. Well, that's like having a toaster that only toasts on one side. And if you do decide to add something like the Yamaha True X Soundbar 50A to your TV, that's like having a perfect toaster that delivers golden brown toast on both sides every single time. And if you do decide to get the Yamaha True X 1A speakers for the rear channels, that's like having a toaster that can not only toast golden brown toast perfectly every time, but also can add melted cheese to the top. Now I'm getting extremely hungry. And if you do pick one up, just imagine how much more you'll enjoy binge watching your favorite series and gaming and enjoying movies at home, excluding the Marvels and Madam Web. There is no saving those movies. Okay, so now you know the importance of getting a tasty audio system, but do you know how to choose a good TV? And if the answer is no, there's a thumbnail on screen right now that will help you out a lot when it comes to choosing a new TV. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.